upload videos greater than 15 minutes to YouTube? I don't know. Google likes me. Um, I got a special notice on my Korea Bridge account because I've been uploading a lot of Korea stuff to um, uh, YouTube, and they gave me an official, "Hey, you can post longer than 15 minutes now," and I was very proud. Um, and I thought I'd just try on Jeff Lebo, and it let me do it. Um, whereas I tried it on the EdTech Talk account and got rejected. So I think Google likes me. I like Google. I think they sensed it. You say you do. You know, you've said a lot of nice things about Google and the Hangout. It, it pays off, I think. Listening. They're tuning in. It, it, it could be monitoring these these channels. And Google, you know, if you want to buy into World Bridges, I'm very open. Give you a very reasonable price. You're gonna have ten percent of the company for like five mil. <laughs> I'm reasonable. Yeah, you know they've 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 spent quite a. Quite a quite a few uh, bucks on on companies. It seems like through the years. Well, why, what's five mil? They must be pretty happy these days. I mean, I think Google Plus has just been as much of a home run as it could be at this point. I I totally agree. I think you know, um, it's fun. It is funny. The the uh, I don't know how to say it, the level of impatience that that you see you see out there too. Um, gee, where's the iPad app, or where's the uh, this or that or the? <laughs> Jeez, why can we only have ten people in a hangout? I know, it's like <laughs> this thing was just born ten days ago. <laughs> Did you happen to see the video of? Um, is it Louis? He's got some sitcom. Uh, he was on one of the late night talk shows talking about you know. We're so lucky right now, and people just complain about everything. You know, we've never I had it better. I did see that, yeah. I did, yeah. We are so lucky. I mean, it's... We are. I mean, yeah. So many different ways, we, yeah. Yeah, it was, the dude, it was the guy complaining about we have everything, but we're, we're all unhappy or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like, oh, the, I have to sit on the runway for 15 minutes. As I fly from New York to LA in five hours, for less than it would cost to take the bus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I I agree. I think Google is. I think I think Google Plus is a quite frankly is a little bit un Google like, in a lot of ways. How so? I just, I just don't think their 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 scale is incredible, and I think their scale is unparalleled. But I think their polish and their UI has always been a little bit chaotic. And particularly, you know, I know like Google Docs and, you know, within Docs, the spreadsheet tool and the word processing tool and the, the presentation tool, those were, I think one was homegrown, but like the, the word processing thing was rightly. So they've, they've acquired these different products from different companies. So they're trying to unify the experience across platforms. but. It still is very, yeah. You, their UI, they're just not Apple in that. In that I, was it you who told me or someone else that they kind of had uh, recruited a bunch of Apple designers? Not me, no. But so yeah, one uh, apparently one of their key engineers was a former Apple employee. I think he's kind of in his fifties or something like that. Worked on the, the Macintosh back, team back in the day or something like that. Suppose, supposedly he was the, the key designer or driving force behind the whole like circles UI, which is which is cool. Pretty nice UI. It. What do you think of this? Uh, the fact that you can see when people post to a circle, you can see who that is, or you can see which circle the people who are in whatever circles that they posted to. Oh, there's Scott. It's poor sc hey, you made it in. I got it fixed. What was the issue? Interesting issue. Hi, Matt. Hey, Scott. How you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm good now. I'm in the uh, thing. Are we on DS106 yet? No, I, I haven't hatched that. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the thing was, and Mac people might be wondering about this, I found it through uh, a Google group chat or something. Um, Audio Hijack Pro. When that's installed, it has a, um, an extension called Instant On or Instant Hijack. And if that is installed, it will cause the hijack not to open. So an uninstall and a re-login has me here. 
So there you go, breaking news. Very cool. What I'm going to try to do with that, one of the things I've realized that when there's a video on Google Plus and you right click, you get all sorts of menu options, one of which is to post with a link to that time. So I'm going to try like a Scott shares how to overcome your Mac audio hijack issue. Oh, and I should have brushed my hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like you guys are all over at the, uh, the Google Plus and the Hangout. I'm still trying to uh, make sense of this. I am officially a Plus fanboy. Yeah, you have, are. have you used Hangout before, Scott? This is the first time, as I said before, I've tried logging in a couple of times and just getting that wow. error code three. Another virgin. <laughs> yeah. Another notch on our belt. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so what's on the agenda? Absolutely nothing. Cool, cool. Well, I think Jeff was all pleased because he, well, he's webcasting from one computer. Correct, Jeff? That is correct. So far, I have had the two computers going. Um, but I played around with audio settings. I'm on Windows 7, and it's working, I think. Uh, no virtual audio cables, nothing like that. You know, I hear myself, uh, which is okay. Uh, minimal delay. Uh, so all is good, I think. Yay! Excellent. What's up with your microphone set up there, Jeff? <laughs> this is very high tech. <laughs> this is still microphone number one. After all of these years, I got it, I think, at... Um, oh, what's the name of that big tech market in Bangkok? I think it was like five dollars or something. Just a little lavalier mic. I forget, I forget the name of it, but yeah, yeah, that big. Um, and it's just of all the different mics, I, and I bought a lot of mics over the years. I bet you have. This just produces the best sound. I think I had originally three. One died in Thailand. One got crunched by a chair a year ago. And this is the last one left standing. And I continue to go out there looking for different mics. I've got my uh, my chopstick mic here. <laughs> it's just, it's not as good. Yeah. Now, what about your mic? That looks like a serious piece of hardware. Well, it's just a, uh, it's a Shure SM57 uh, dynamic microphone. And uh, I've been using it since I started podcasting so many years ago. And I probably asked you it before, but how much did that one cost? They're about $90. This is actually the same one that the White House uses, has used since the 60s. Not is that it, bad. Did you have a mixing board, Scott? Yeah, I'm using a little mixer, a Behringer mixer. And I'm ready for a new microphone. A student had one on campus. It's a, um, it's a, it's a condenser microphone made by Electrovoice, perhaps. It's called the Cardinal. Electrovoice might not be the right brand name of it, but it's a very small little unit, and I used it for uh, one of our radio broadcasts last week. It's awesome and a very rich sound. But with that, I would need a mixer that has phantom power, and this one doesn't have it. So, so do you have a USB interface on that on that Behringer, or do you have a MIDI device between that Behringer and your computer? Not even that. From the early days, it's it's the the smallest Behringer model with just two channels, four, actually four channels, but two of them are, are double. And the output goes to the line in on the macro, the microphone, the Macintosh. Oh, That's no what I've been using forever. Yeah. So it just goes to the the the. Okay. Yeah, the, so the there's line a line in, in dedicated line in, um, one eighth inch. Yeah. Line in. There was a time when Macintosh stopped doing that when they they eliminated the the input, the line input, and this is when the e remember the Emac was out, mm, and the Emac sure. was the only. Macintosh they were selling that had that feature and I got hold of a used eMac and when I was starting my podcasting back in 04 and uh, have made a point to get computers that have that and it's it's standard now again Have you gotten your little mixer toy yet Matt? The e -Mac. Say again? Uh, I was asking Matt he had ordered a little mixer toy do you have that yet? No I haven't ordered it it still isn't out it's, it's a Behringer Scott uh, Behringer is supposed to release any any day now really a a uh, small little um it's about a 60 dollar mixing board probably mm. like what you have but it has a digital audio digital interface so it has a usb uh, interface that's what we need does it have phantom power as well i think it does yeah i think it does yeah that's what we used with the podcasting kids at school last year we used but we used a bigger behringer um, mm -hmm. just had more inputs and phantom power 
we used uh, Marshall. We had a couple like sixty dollar Marshall microphones um, mm -hmm. plugged into that. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, I mean, it makes it makes all of that that hardware switching. I think makes a makes all of the difference in the world. It does. Yeah, I agree. Although we have no topic, so let me just stray if if you don't mind. We've got a, a Windows computer at this school where we had tried setting up the university station and a radio station, and it had a, uh, the students who purchased the stuff, we got funding from the university for it, as a club activity, uh, got a very nice Yamaha USB mixer, eight or 10 channel, kind of, kind of professional job. And using the software called SAM, you familiar with SAM? SAM Broadcaster? SAM Broadcaster, yeah. Speaking of broadcasters, and hello to Steve Miller. One of Korea's finest video bloggers. Hey, Steve. Hello. Hey, Steve. Welcome. Welcome aboard. Uh, just to make a quick introduction, Steve, I've never actually spoken or met Steve. He, uh, we, we published his video on Korea Bridge. Uh, this is Jeff. Hi, Steve. Next to me is Matt. In California. Hey, Steve. Hey, Matt. And then... And then Way over at the other end yeah, yeah. is Japan's first podcaster. Hi, Steve. Scott. This is Scott talking to you from Tokyo. How you hey, doing? Hey, these were in the same time zone, Scott. That's right. Yeah, right side of the dateline. Absolutely. Happy Friday. <laughs> Indeed. So I'm sorry, Scott. You were riffing on something. Uh, not much, but just I was very frustrated with Sam, and apparently people who use the Sam broadcaster say that you cannot monitor the microphone through the board or through the computer, there's always that half a millisecond or half a second lag. And it just is impossible to, to do any sort of broadcasting with that. So what they recommend is disable the mic to the headphones so you don't even hear it. So there's no way to get a perfect mix and I've not found any workaround for that. Interesting, because I still use Sam for my audio streaming, but I don't run my mic through that at all. I really just use it to stream out the stereo mix. Okay, so for mixing different audio sources, it's probably super for that. But the live DJing part is a no-go, in my experience so far. So, um, um, Steve, have you hung out before? No, it's actually the first time I've actually had the opportunity to, uh, to do it. I uh, had the um, plug-in the other day, and then I saw that you guys were doing it. And I was like, oh, I have a few time, a few minutes before my first class, so I think I'll uh, join and see what the whole hangout is like. Now, I thought I read you were kind of heading into vacation time. That is absolutely true. I uh, have three days left of work and then one month vacation. What's the plan? Uh, we're going to head back to the States, spend a week in Arizona, then a week in California, another week in Arizona, and then finally a week in the D.C. area before I come back. Cool. Any video blogging along the way or leave uh, the camera in the bag? Do, well, I'll probably do some informal stuff on the, the vlog channel, but we have about six projects we're going to film while we're in the States. And is your partner into all this video stuff too, or? She's not so much into the video aspects of it, but uh, Joe, I, I'm very lucky. Joe is a great photographer, so when we go out on projects, she does all my still photography. So, uh, and uh, if I need someone to hold the camera for me for a shot, so I can be in the shot, that way we don't have to carry a tripod. Because I'm just thinking, if I were to tell my wife that, oh, we're taking a month-long vacation and I have only six projects to work on, she wouldn't be very happy. <laughs> well, originally, originally, I wasn't going to bring the camera. And she's the one actually planned all the projects. Can you give us an example of a project? Um, well, we uh, she, she found this deal on Groupon that... Uh, there's a <clears throat> couple different steamboats out in Arizona. So she uh, took, got tickets for the whole family. And then she's like, and you need to do a video about it. So there, there we go. And then we're gonna stay with some friends in San Francisco. So she wants to do a year neck of the woods with, with them and so forth, so. Oh, very cool. I should have mentioned, Steve, um, I am streaming this and recording this. Okay, cool. Hope that's okay. Yeah, I'm always assuming that. <laughs> That's good. That's safe, especially <laughs> when I'm involved. Steve, a steamboat in Arizona? 
There, okay, so down down in the Phoenix area, you have a whole series of lakes that uh, lead out to Roosevelt area. And so there's a lot of fishing, a lot of deep canyons. So uh, some two operators have dropped some steamboats in there. And well, they're, originally they were steamboats and now they're more diesel and other motorcraft, but they go on scenic tours up throughout the, the channels and uh, you get to see some great scenery. Nice. Are you on any kind of vacation, Scott? Oh, he's playing with his audio. Hello. I had mic down. Hey, I'm back. I was just uh, putting a thing in the text chat. I'm going to try to send this audio out to DS106, if that's okay. Sure. Okay, see if I can do it. Um, actually, uh, I'm sort of in the same boat as Steve, just winding up the classes at one of my jobs, which will be next week. I have two more classes. Then the week after, going back to the States with two of my daughters for three weeks. How old are the daughters now? Seven, nine, and eleven. Okay. So yeah. the two youngest ones will go. The oldest one is in sixth grade. I don't know how it is in Korea, but uh, she's getting ready for junior high school entrance examinations. So doing cram school. Oh yes. And uh, is that a big deal in Korea as well? And not so much for the junior and high schools. It's the the, the big exam is is for college. Right. Right. That's so high school students are putting in extra hours. Yeah, because well. No, the, the the test isn't until November, and they only get they get one shot. It's every November, and that's it. So if you screw up on it, you have to wait another year before you can take the entrance exam. Ouch. Are the exams by school, or is it a national examination? It's a national exam. That's for senior year. Although there is some kind of exam process to get into certain middle yeah, schools yeah, or high for schools. The ones. Yeah, for the special ones, but you know, most most of the kids, like, at least in my city, they just you know. Where are you, Steve? I'm in Dongtan. Near Suwon uh, Osan area. Okay. Yeah, they just announced in Kyunggi-do, which is one of the big suburbs of Seoul, I guess you could call it, announced that, oh, we're changing our budget and we no longer have money for the 800 or whatever foreign teachers that are in the school systems. And so those whose contracts are coming to an end are gone, and those who just signed a few months ago may not get their salaries in a few months. Yeah. Like I, I have two friends that are, are here with GEPIC, which is the Young Adult program, and you know they resigned back in March, and you know they're in the states on their holiday right now, and you know they'll come back and they don't know if they have a job or not, or I, they, I should say they have a job, whether or not they'll get paid or not. <laughs> they have a new hobby. Yeah. Um, Steve, uh, you mentioned you're leaving soon. I was thinking about doing a Korea Bridge hangout on Monday. Are you still around then? I, I am. I, we don't leave till Thursday. It just depends on what time. Uh, I was thinking like nine ish or ten ish. At night. Yep. Right, that should be fine. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. No. No problem. We're we're on. We start the intensives next week, so my last class is now flipped for the morning. Excellent. I'll send you some info. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. So Scott, what what do you teach? I teach a lot of things. I'm an adjunct instructor at about three, four different universities. Classes, oh, basic ESL at a couple of places. At another place, I teach public speaking and computer classes. And the third place, I teach radio. And the new class I just started this last summer, cyberspace and society, which is a computer science course. Ooh. So uh, a lot of stuff. Oh, that's <laughs> pretty interesting. Yeah, that, it's too that cool. is pretty interesting. Traveling right up your alley every, kind of stuff every day. Well, yeah, I wouldn't like to travel with this, but you know, the last the cyberspace one was interesting because I actually worked in distance education back in the nineties, um, and wrote a couple papers yeah. on it, presented at conferences. So that's always a, a big passion of mine. Hmm. What are you teaching? Uh, right now, I'm doing elementary education, ESL, uh, but uh, come the fall, I'll be full time professor at a university teaching at English. Oh, and I, awesome. I just put in links to your guys' uh, sites. Cool. And Matt and I at some point need to reconnect. I owe you an email, Matt, but... Oh, so, thanks. Scott, I had, a, I had a question about your your computer science course. Is that a coding course? Or uh, will, the, will the students be coding? And if so, what what 
languages and platforms might they? No, it's not. It, it's in the computer science department, and it's a science credit, and I'm not at all qualified to teach that with an MA in TESOL. But since it's a, an American university here in Tokyo, I've been there for five or six years, and there's nobody else to teach the class. I'm getting to do it. And it's an introductory course to issues of using computers and using mm. computers to navigate the internet and understanding privacy and copyright mm. and what I did this last semester was tried to borrow from the DS 106 model that's a digital storytelling class out of uh, Virginia University of Mary Washington um, where students create an online identity and learn different techniques of working with visual and audio and video just to put stuff on the net and uh, it was a tough class for me first time out but a lot of fun Sure. Could you, you know, I, I've heard so much about DS-106 and never really kind of fully understood it. Could you give me the elevator speech on DS-106? I don't know if I can keep it that brief. It's really awesome. It's a mind blower. And just incidentally, I wasn't able to patch the audio through. I would have to do it before logging in here. But uh, DS-106, is it's based on an idea that Gardner Campbell came up with a couple of years ago in an essay he wrote called personal cyber infrastructure and in that Campbell talks about um, the way technology as it entered both publishing and education used something he calls a digital facelift where they kept the existing forms of information distribution and just put it online as evidenced by learning management systems and blackboard mm -hmm. where it's just kind of teachers putting their notes out there and having some sort of chat and what Campbell feels as neat is that students, young people need to learn how to inject themselves into the, uh, or not themselves, but a, an essence or an element of their identity into the, the cyberspace and actually learn how to set up a web server and build a web page, which they'll use throughout their whole undergraduate experience and use this web space for their work and their courses. So the DS-106 class is one kind of computer science class at University of Mary Washington, which is borrowing that model, and they have students uh, do these awesome projects, and the teachers are very involved, and uh, becomes, as much as anything I've seen on the internet, a community, and it's done as a MOOC type of course, so there are people all over the world taking it, so there's this interaction between educators and people who are just doing this because they have heard about how cool it is, as well as the students in the class. And it's just a very uh, energizing and exciting thing to be a part of. And That's one of the, the big wows elevator. of this was... Um, check it out, check it out. The DS-106 radio was quite the hit. Um, and th during the course, people it was opened up and people could jump in with their own audio anytime. What has happened since then? Is anyone besides you still playing with it? Oh, the, the radio is kind of an adjunct that developed in January. It's still going on. Um, I checked out for a month or so when I was doing my own course here this summer, um, and I'm trying to get back into it. Uh, so yeah, there are, there, it, there's never a large audience on the radio between half a dozen and a dozen people, depending on what's happening. But when people aren't on live, there's a playlist that plays continually, and anybody can take over the stream when they want. You just need the username and password, which are freely available, and the equipment and technology to set up a live stream. So yeah, the radio is sort of its own entity, which part of the, the course uses it for a couple of weeks during each semester. And Scott, I have to thank you again for linking up with our students on our internet radio uh, station the day after the the earthquake in Japan. I know that was uh, quite an experience for us, and we, you know, it was great for our kids to be able to connect with you. Um, are are you done talking about the earthquake, or what's the what what's what's going on with the recovery ep efforts? Or oh, God, well, what you guys are doing is, is so awesome. Your your student radio show, and again, that's kind of what I hope to talk to you about at some point. I would love to have a gig like you do, just working with bright students and making media every day. That's there may be an opening. <laughs> Maybe so. Matt has changed jobs. Oh, really? Yes. yes huh. Indeed. He got fired. 
Uh, I did not get fired. <laughs> did not get fired. He was quick to interject that. Part. Although that 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 may have been coming next, Scott. <laughs> All right, beverage break. Excuse me. Well, yeah, the the earthquake. Did you hear about the beef? Where's mm. the beef? You have? Yeah, I am. that was prison over here. Yeah, I'm sure it's big news in Korea. Yeah, um, there was straw from rice that has been that was in the Fukushima area that has been distributed throughout northern Japan. So cattle have been feeding on this straw for the past three or four months, and now that those cows have been slaughtered and sent to market, and it turns out that the uh, the straw was radiated with this cesium element, and apparently it's been detected in the beef, although the uh, the agriculture ministry representative said the, the meat is safe but it has gone to market and it's been in the burgers so i don't know how dangerous or serious that is but it's just one of those things i saw you pound your forehead when i mentioned it. it's just like oh my gosh this is like really really unthinkable what's happening and um we have so little information so it's it's uh it's tough it's tough um, the, the living conditions up north are still horrible. There are people that have not yet been able to return home or are living in shelters. And families have been disrupted. Life has been disrupted. And uh, what was said, what was the impact of the uh, the women's World Cup uh, championship? Was that quite quite the story? I suppose, obviously. Yeah, yeah, and it continues to be. It will be through the week. The, the ladies are on all of the TV channels every day, showing off their medals, and it's a great source of joy and uh, inspiration much needed a great game yeah I didn't I didn't see it that was Monday morning it was a holiday but my daughters woke up and they were watching it and they had turned on just as the uh, the, the second or the, the overtime period ended and went to penalty kicks so they were shouting like crazy at six or seven in the morning really exciting here Well, we'll definitely have to circle back and talk talk more about youth webcasting and internet radio and that sort of thing. And this hangout stuff has got to make it a lot easier and interesting. I think so, well, Jeff. I well, it reminds so. me of the old days of Stigan. Just works better. Yes, doesn't crash. I, I never did stick cam. What is that? Yes. What was uh, it? Well, I think it's still around. It's essentially just like this, where you can start a one person can start a room, and you have a dozen people or so up here on camera and talk back and forth, just like this, and have chat. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then you know, blog TV and Ustream and all that kind of stuff came out about the same time or shortly thereafter. And like Stickham had a big teenage audience, kind of the a lot of the Facebook crew, and you know, so far Google Plus has felt more like the adults network or a little bit more serious. Mm -hmm. I wonder if using Hangout for that kind of stick'em stuff would get some of the teens in here. I, I don't know. I mean, like, when we were using stick'em, you know, it was mainly the old YouTube crowd. Uh, and we'd be in there at night and hang out and chit chat about different aspects of, of being online and creating content and just, you know, getting to know one another. So when we actually got to the YouTube gatherings, mm -hmm. it was like meeting old friends. Mm -hmm. How long have you been uh, video blogging? Uh, four mm -hmm. years. Four years? Yeah, four years. 2007. And has that whole time been in Korea? No, only the last two years. Well, uh, actually, yeah, two, two years or so. Where were you before here? Uh, States, Arizona. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. And it seems to be a robust, there's a much more robust Korean video blogging scene than podcasting scene. There's very few Korean podcasts. I don't know, I'm a big podcaster uh, as, I, as I start my own podcast. Uh, no, uh, I don't listen to a lot of different podcasts because I don't find a lot too interesting because a lot of it's rehashed from different sources I already, already watch or read. So I don't want to get the same information. But uh, both the video community and the podcasting community here in Korea seems to be very small. Are you in tune with the Japanese communities still, Scott, as a founding father on the Mount Rushmore of Japan podcasting? No, I've 
pretty much quit my podcast and then I tried to reboot it and that hasn't gone anywhere so no I'm not podcasting Japan anymore so Steve I'm wondering what the people in your office are thinking are they used to you talking to your computer a lot uh, somewhat yes even sometimes when I make a video I like have to come over here and appear in it really quick we were making well, I had like some kind of candy or something I, I found some kind of candy and when my coworkers was like what are you doing? I'm making a video. Come over here. And we both had the candy and it was quite entertaining. All right. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, head out. But thank you all very much for playing with me. Well, it was fun. And I look forward to getting information about Monday. Um, do you have a preference, 9 or 10? Uh, I don't. Well, I, you know, to be honest, I don't even know if I'm going to finish. I think I finish at 7.30 on Monday, so it really doesn't matter to me. So. Okay. Um, and if you know anyone else who might be interested, uh, I was thinking about talking about either the art scene, photo scene, and or video scene, so. Okay. We'll hang out. We'll cool. There. All right. Have a good one, gentlemen. See you all. Good to meet bye, you. Scott. So bye, Matt. Bye. Bye, Matt. Bye-bye.